Okay, welcome back. It's Mr. Hurst again. I just want to spend a few minutes of your time going through some reminders and also some new information about how school will look for Monday the 8th of March. Now, before I do that, I just want to uh, remind you of our We Are Wycliffe skills. Uh, for the last few weeks and months, you will have been very independent. So we're looking at that independent thinker skill. You will have had to quite possibly do a lot of things for yourself, make decisions yourself, get on with your work by yourself. All right. So you will have uh, looked at and considered lots and lots of different skills associated with that. What we now need you to do is to move from that to slap bang in the middle there, the We Are Wycliffe skill of being a responsible citizen. As lockdown comes to an end and we return to school, we need you to be responsible as a student and as a local person in the community. All right, so a real shift now towards you being responsible and thinking of other people. Now, before I go through some of the uh, reminders and changes, just a little bit of a celebration, really, for what you've been doing over the last few weeks, last couple of months. Right, and to be honest, vast majority of you have been absolutely amazing. You've attended your live lessons. Our attendance has been superb. You've engaged in the lessons. You've used the chat. You've completed the work. You've got involved with the quizzes and the assessments. You've used the whiteboards and so on. Right? Really, really good effort. Great engagement. Great attendance. Many of you have attempted our house competitions and quizzes. And quite a few of you have been looking at Twitter, have been participating in our Gritcliffe Challenge. Well done to everybody right, for the last few weeks and months. Hasn't been easy. You will be rewarded via ePraise for all of your efforts. So, some reminders. Now, it's not just me reminding you. We've also had lots of reminders from the government right, that we as a school need to make sure it remains a safe place to be with the common goal of reducing the risk of infection. So a slide here that has some do's on the right and some don'ts on the left. Right? And this is where we need to be responsible. We all need to play our part. Uh, and you're probably looking down those lists now. I'll pick out a couple of key points from the don'ts. Where possible, please don't bunch together, hugging, linking arms, and all that sort of thing. That will transmit germs. Please don't take your masks off in the toilet areas. You need to play your part in reducing the risk of infection. And when you do wear your masks, make sure you're wearing them properly. On the other side, the do's, almost the opposites here. Where possible, move around the building, keeping left in a sensible way. Where possible, maintain social distancing. It's a busy school, right? It's sometimes impossible, but do your best to maintain social distancing. Keep your masks on in the toilet areas. All he said, that helps reduce the spread of the virus. And wear your mask properly, not down over your chin, not down, not covering your nose. Make sure you get it right, please. So some do's and don'ts. The structure of the day did change during lockdown. Right, but we are now going back to how it was before Christmas. Right, different times, starting and finishing times, different lesson times, different break times. Right, and that is designed to keep you apart from other students and other bubbles. To protect members of the local community, and this is where you really need to be a responsible citizen. Right, the government have said that you must wear face coverings on buses, and in shops. So this doesn't just apply to the top shop and the school bus. This is all shops and all buses. It is not optional. You must wear a face covering. And I've already mentioned social distancing. Ideally, you would need to be staying two metres from other people. However, in a busy school, that is not always possible. And in some circumstances, it's impossible. But where possible, you must socially distance. And again, please do not touch other people. Hugging, linking arms, everything else, or their possessions. This virus hangs about on possessions and surfaces too. 
Please avoid doing those things. Some reminders, your routes into school, nines and elevens, you will use the entrance as you did before Christmas at the corner of West End Park and walk up the old bus lane. Year sevens, you'll come into school by the zebra crossing on Turnsteads Avenue. And years eight and ten, you'll use the entrance near the main vehicle entrance and walk up towards the Vibe. As you enter the school building, you must sanitise your hands. Not optional. You must sanitise your hands. And you must do that when you leave the building as well. And at various times throughout the day. Hands are one of the most common parts that will transmit the germs. Keep them clean as often as you can. Some of you bring your own sanitizer. Well done for that, that's great. Okay, one of the key changes from the recent government guidance is all to do with face coverings. We are used to the box at the top. This was the case before Christmas. Face coverings had to be worn in communal areas unless you are exempt, eating or outside. The change now is that the government are now saying face coverings should be worn at all times in classrooms too. Of course, if you're exempt, that wouldn't apply. But face coverings should be worn at all times in classrooms. In relation to the teacher and the teacher wearing a face covering, uh, a teacher may well choose to remove their face covering whilst they're at the front of the room behind that two metre safety line. But when the teacher circulates the room to check your work, for example, the teacher would then um, be expected to put on their face covering for your safety and theirs. The layout of the school remains as five separate bubbles with year seven using the ground floor and years eight to 11, each occupying a different corner of the building on floors one and two. And as you all know, you must not under any circumstances break bubbles. That is how it would be cross contamination, germs spreading and so on. You were really good at this before Christmas. We need you to be good at it again. In classrooms, again, different to how it's been historically. Everybody at the moment needs to sit and face the front, as you can see in the picture there. And the change I've already mentioned, face coverings should now be worn in classrooms too. And again, a reminder, no different to how it was before Christmas. We would expect you to clean your desk at the, every, at the end of every lesson. You must do that to protect yourself and other people. The teacher will organise the spray and the, the cleaning, um, the tissues and wipes. We would expect you to clean it properly and dispose of the rubbish in the appropriate bin. You must do that. Thank you in advance for doing that. We also asked you to bring more equipment and we need you to continue doing that. Uh, you must bring your own equipment and please don't give your equipment to other people. That defeats the object. That's how germs will spread. And you bringing more equipment helps us out. We don't have to lend equipment, which again would be a form of transmission. So quite a long list there. We expect you, though, to be bringing all of your own. And certainly some of the equipment we would expect you to get out onto your desk without having to be asked. Your planner, your workbooks, your pencil cases, etc. We would also expect you to follow the power of three. We expect you to be ready to be respectful and to be safe. No change there at all with our rewards and behaviour policy. Where you do get it right, as you know, you get rewarded through e-praise, through house points. When it doesn't go to plan, 
Please re-familiarise yourself with verbal warnings and consequences, C1s, C2s and so on. They might result in an R&R, &R. those are the locations for those. And just a reminder, when you started Wycliffe Mount, you entered into an agreement, a partnership. You, your parents and carers, and us, the school, agreed that we would work together to give you the best possible deal. And you were part of that, you signed that. And another key change that you might be aware of. You might have had conversations at home about testing, COVID testing. You may well have seen it on the news. And there is now um, a requirement for schools right, to test you as students and to train you on how to test so that you can do it yourselves at home. So there will be more information coming to you, some of which you've had already, about how we are going to test you. So that uh, information is on a letter that you've probably already received at home. Right? And we will tell you more information right, as we go through the next few days and weeks to make sure you are comfortable right, doing that COVID testing at home. And we have got plenty of staff that are now trained in how to teach you to do that. Right, so it's absolutely nothing to worry about. But that is one of the key changes that I'm sure you will already be aware of. More information to follow on that. So now some information for Year 9 students. Firstly, a reminder that your Year 9 bubble is located in the corner of the building with the restaurant and the LRC. Your bubble uh, includes floors one and two. Very important that when you leave your bubble to go to lunch and break, you do so in the correct way. And that you only use the toilets that have been allocated to your bubble. So just a reminder that 9W, your toilets for lunch and break are the second floor student toilets. And when you go downstairs to the restaurant, you would walk around the outside of the building and into the restaurant, the back door. For 9M, you will take a similar journey to the restaurant, down the LRC stairs, outside and around the back. And for 9M, your toilets will be the student toilets on floor one. Students' uh, toilets for emergency use during lesson time, students with toilet passes, etc. You can see there the toilets that have been allocated for you there. 9W, they'll be the usual floor two student toilets. And for 9M, the single toilet that's opposite the head teacher's office on floor one. If you need any of this information written down that I've just been going through, then please ask Mrs. Spate for another student information card, just like you got in September, and she will pass that on to you. Finally, just a reminder about emergency evacuation. So if you hear the siren, the continuous siren indicating an emergency evacuation, you would leave the school, school building from, your, from the nearest exit. And that's probably going to be the site services door that you use at the start and end of school. Once you leave the school building, you will make your way to the places shown on the aerial photo. You will need to stay in your classes uh, and make your way to those areas that are marked on the fence with yellow signs. Stay in your classes with your class teacher uh, and await further instructions. If at the time of the evacuation you are doing practical PE, you will make your way to the mugger and you will line up in your classes next to the sports hall. This aerial photo just shows you from a different angle where your meeting points are. So thank you for your attention over the last few minutes. Really looking forward to seeing you all within the next few days back in school. <laughs>